Hey, everyone. <laughs> so, thank you very much for that presentation, by the way. Um, uh, it's, it's really, really awesome to see like the latest and greatest that blend for web can do. Um, I'm going to go back a little bit to the, the, the foundations of that. Um, so as you mentioned, uh, blend for web is based on Blender. And I'm, I want to talk about a little bit about, about it. I'm, a, I'm an artist at the moment. Um, at the moment, yeah, I guess I hope <laughs> we'll keep being it. I work at the Blender Institute, um, which is also happens to be an animation studio. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, how, um, not, not so much of the technical part. At, when I was thinking about this talk, I was like, OK, should I go to the technical side, or should I go to the more the, like maybe just interaction in real time? And and then I thought, okay, maybe it's not so much about the tool, but more about this, about the people, about being here. And I'm from Argentina, so it's, we are even like more far away than <laughs> than the Netherlands. And being here, and and how this software and how developing open source tools uh, allows you to get people together, how the, the the software improves, how not only one company like the Blender Institute or Blend for Web, how they can all uh, help together to make um, to, to improve the tools and yeah, and get people together, do do fun stuff together. So I'm going to go a little bit, well, actually a lot back, more like 20 years back, um, to where all it all started. So first, I want to show the latest, and then I'll I'll go, I'll go back. Uh, you probably seen it. It's just a, a two-minute video of the of what Blender can do, but it's very short. Oh. So, okay, it's not really fair because it's Cycles only. Cycles is a render, uh, one of the render engines that uh, Blender uses. So it can do way more than that, but we already seen the other part um, before. Um, but what I wanted to show is a bit, little bit of the contrast of how Blender started. And it's also very interesting to see, well, maybe you don't recognize this. This is where, how Blender started. Blender was, um, it's just the product the tool made by a studio back in the 90s, early 90s, even late 80s, I would say, um, uh, called Neo Geo. It actually was set up in the 90s. It's, a, it's just a game company, like yet another game company back in the day that wanted, wanted to make games. So it's, a, it's very interesting how back like 20, 20 years ago, uh, almost 30 years ago, people were wanted to make this real time stuff interactive and how we are now after we are going back to that i think and, and, and that's what I, it's all about this presentation i want to show how it's started as a game uh, company and now it's all going back so this company wanted to well yeah they were they wanted to improve yeah, 90 90 92 
that is really long ago. And I'm going to leave this video, but I just wanted to show the contrast. Um, this is all render stuff back in the day that Blender was doing, but uh, it all started as, as a game company. And even, even myself, I started using Blender, just I wanted to make games. I failed, <laughs> but the, the idea was to make interactive content, things that you can actually control, move, and uh, yes, it's not really exciting, so you don't, have to <laughs> you don't have to see it all, actually. I will save you the pain. I mean, it's not too bad. It's like Toy Story 1 level, uh, sort of. Okay, next. It's not working. The, <laughs> the company, the, the game company, they, they wanted to make the games, and, and they had the tools. They have this great tool, which back in 1992, it could do like things that you could do, like you would watch in a movie, like Toy Story from Pixar. So it wasn't too bad. It's a, it, it's a tool from a little town in the south of the Netherlands that can do these things. It's actually pretty promising, but it wasn't working as a game company. It just wasn't giving, wasn't making enough money. Um, back then, Blender was just this in-house tool. Yeah, it wasn't open. It was just just another tool of the bunch. Um, it was uh, in-house, so the studio made it for themselves, and they just were improving it. And some of the th the the things that we have in Blender nowadays, like these hidden shortcuts that you don't know exactly what you what they do, um, they they come from back in the day where. Blender was made in a room with four or five people, and then, uh, yeah, it's, I need a feature. Okay, just press P to run the game. And then, yeah, four people know, so then it's, that's enough. You don't have to communicate with anybody else. And that some of those things are still in Blender, uh, but we're fixing it, and I'm going to get to that. But uh, my point here is that Blender started as a, it wanted to make games. It didn't work. They even managed to make uh, PlayStation 1 uh, exports, um, which didn't work. Well, no. Actually, it worked. You could play it. And uh, a few years ago in Blender Conference 2012, when it, when it became 10 years open source, there was a PlayStation 1 with Blender, Blender games running there. Um, that was a problem when we wanted to make it open source. We had to get rid of all of the Sony code. But the thing is, it wasn't working. So, okay, but we have this awesome software. So that's how not a number starts. In 1988, Blender, um, Blender comes online to the public uh, as this software by the company, not a number. So they come up with a logo, which we're still using. That's great. And they come up with these versions. This um, Blender was free, as in you don't have to pay for it. In, in 1998, and that's what made it special. Like a lot of software back in the days, everything was paid, or or just too you know, yeah, expensive or just impossible to use. But Blender was still light, was still this weird software. Um, but it it worked. It sort of worked. Nope, it didn't work. The company found that Blender was being used, but you couldn't make any money out of it. <laughs> So the investors were not really happy about it. It's like, yes, we have this great tool. And they, they made a paid version that you, you could get like a few more features for, for a license, but it didn't work. People were just using it. Uh, I myself, I was using back in the day um, because it was, yeah, it was free and the community around it started growing and it was, it was amazing, but not on a business level. That's when the investors decide to shut down Blender. That's uh, in the early 2000s. Um, the investor says, okay, if it's not making any money, let's shut it down. We keep the software, let's, let's, let's kill it <laughs> while we still have it. But that's not really cool. The community actually from 1998 to 2002, more or less in four years has grown a lot. So. That's when the Blender Foundation comes in. The Blender Foundation is an attempt from the main developer, uh, Don Rosenthal, to, to try to save Blender, basically. Save it from the shutdown, from the, the, the investors wanted to get wanted to kill it. So, okay, um, I'll set up an, uh, a foundation. I will 
get enough money, I will buy Blender for you, and I will put it. I will make it open source for everybody. And that sounds crazy. Like, what even what's even crazier is that uh, this hundred thousand euro, which how many rubles is that? Probably m a lot. <laughs> um, um, that was the, the the idea, like the amount of money that you have to get to in order to to buy Blender. So this foundation had this crazy goal how, all over the world. How are you going to get hundred thousand? This is, was way before Kickstarter or anything. It was two thousand two, like not even I don't know, not even YouTube existed. Not even I don't know. It was so long ago that this amount of money, the Blender Foundation, say okay, maybe we can take two years to raise this money and then okay, let's. Let's try to set up a business and everything. Um, maybe two years is a bit too much, so they, they launched the campaign. And in seven weeks, <laughs> they didn't have time for anything. They, uh, they, they, got, they got the money. They got money from all over the world. A hundred thousand, that, that's, I don't know, back in the day it was even more according to adjusted to, for infla inflation and stuff. But it's crazy. So. It means there is a community behind it, and this is what I mentioned at the beginning of the of the presentation: is that it's all about the community, it's all about the power of the people who make the software, who help and contribute with small um, um, contributions and, and code, or just sharing it. So that's when open source development begins. It's amazing. We have this amazing software. It, this is 2002. Yes. We have this great software. Let's 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 do stuff with it. This is how it looks back in the day. <laughs> it wasn't the prettiest uh, software around. Uh, that's uh, Spanish for "I want cycles, please." By the way, I run this. I, I run this on my computer the other day. This is a very old version, 225. This is the last version that was uh, closed source, like that you can't access the whole code. Um, so. If you think Blender is not pretty now, imagine <laughs> how was it back in the day. So it wasn't also very, very flexible. It was very focused on just um, the, the game part. Um, many of the, of the settings here were just focused on game. It had a little Pac-Man icon that I really like, and uh, for some reason we got rid of it. Um, it was a purple Pac-Man. Um, but this is the thing, you, you, have this, you have the open source software, which at first it took a little bit to remove all of the code. You know, uh, we, we come from this software that was made in the south of the Netherlands, so half of the code was Dutch, basically. <laughs> all the functions, the names, the code, the comments were in Dutch, of course. So first you have to translate the code. Then, uh, yeah, you could export it to PlayStation 1, but Sony probably is not really happy with that code being released open source, so you have to clean that. Um, so it, it took a while to to uh, to clean it up and fix this mess, basically. Um, the, the, the open source developments continue. This was a few versions after. This was uh, 225. It was two, three versions afterwards, and we were so we like the community was so excited about the new features that they even put it in the splash screen, like that much. This, this feature basically means that you can see the faces before you couldn't see the faces. It was just just wireframes, just like wires in the in the middle of the space. Um, so it's funny that, yeah, we people were so excited that they put it on the splash screen, <laughs> a wireframe. Um, this is uh, the the free Blender fund. It was still the Blender Foundation. We still were not really uh, <laughs> sure which URL to use. Is it Blender or Blender 3D? So you just put both of them, just in case, in the splash screen. And the Free Blender Fund was like the project that uh, freed Blender, um, but it was still the, the Blender Foundation behind it. So, the uh, you have the software, you have you you can start cleaning it up, and then at the first, with the little amount of power that you have, the the manpower, the the developers that you have available, you you want to make everything basically. First, let's fix the UI. So uh, this is. A few versions later, actually more like 10 versions later, um, I, I picked this, this version in particular because I made this, <laughs> the little carrot. But um, the UI is a bit better now. It's, it, it came, not now, but back then for this uh, picture. Um, the UI is a bit better. You, can, you have panels, you can arrange them, you have like tabs, so it, it's getting a bit better. But still the development 
itself is not driven by anything else than just need, like just greed of like, okay, we want everything. Um, first was getting rid of the non-open uh, non source uh, code. Then fixing the worst part of Blender, like the UI, so people could, um, developers could have their own panels and stuff. Then um, the modeling tools were, were fixed, so modeling is like the basic thing. You just, you need modeling for and everything, anything. So that was one of the first few things, but still, it's not working because you can't just do everything at once, right? You need you need like to go in the one direction. You need you you have maybe ten developers, so let's make these people even less, maybe five developers back then. But you need to you know go in another direction. So that's when this question comes up: What if we lock in a room, <laughs> the best Blender users in the world for a few months? This means. Uh, so the community kept growing all, of, all over the, the years, and people were asking for features, and that's, that's why the development was a bit not really going in any direction. So uh, Tom Rosendahl, this, uh, the, the creator of Blender and the uh, chairman of the Blender Foundation, and the main developer back then, when he used to develop, not anymore, sadly, but he uh, comes up with this question, like, let's get the best Blender users um, which also happens to be Blender artists, <laughs> Blender users as in developers, but also as a great artists that know Blender and can put up with all the bugs that he had back in the day and all the weird stuff that he had. And what if we just lock them in a room? They can go out, of course, for dinner, and, but they have to come back and just, just get them together for a few months and let's see what, what happens. Let's see what Blender really needs to, to make a project, to make a movie. So good things happen, actually. This uh, movie, this was the first um, open movie project ever. In Well, ever. Yeah, yeah let's say ever. Ever. <laughs> this <laughs> uh, Elephant's Dream, uh, I'm not going to show it because it's, uh, it, yeah, we already seen enough videos and uh, you need to, need to understand it. It's very special, very artsy. Um, but having, um, people using Blender, pushing it every day, every day, um, with a goal, with, okay, let's make a movie, then that's where development actually moved forward. Have you ever used a compositor in Blender, for example, the nodes? Well, now we, we for Cycles, we use nodes, for example. Um, for the compositor, we use nodes, animation nodes. Everything is nodes now, but that node editor came out of the first open movie ever. And it was made by Don, by the way, but it was made by the, the, the creator of Blender. So it got rewritten a few times afterward. But <laughs> that's, that's when you see, like, OK, there is, there is potential for this. Who funds this? Who, who, who pays for this project? I mean, you can just fly people in out of their own will and then lock them in a room. You have to feed them at, at least once a day. You, know, <laughs> you, have to, you have to give them, throw some food there. Um, so you need, you need money for that. Who's doing that? Who, who's paying for it? Is we can't ask the investors anymore because they 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 saw that they they saw that the software didn't uh, didn't make any money. Then we we got a hundred thousand euro. So what if we ask again the community for like okay, we want to make a movie. We want to improve. We want to make a compositor. Can you chip in a few a few uh, bucks to to make it happen? And that's how it came out. So. It really works. It's kind of working, actually, because you, you have the community who wants to improve Blender bit by bit. So what if we make a movie out of it? And what if, wh what can we give them back? Okay, you can get uh, the Blender features. Yeah, but we're going to get them anyway, right? What, what else can we get? What if we make open uh, all the, the sources, the blend files, the textures, the, the everything, basically? and the movie itself. And that's when this new concept that not only the software was open source, but also the content was open. So you can actually go somewhere, like back then you could buy the, the, the DVD back in the day, <laughs> and you could download these guys. You can, you can see how they're done, you can, you can learn from it. 
you can open the textures, you can share the textures, you can do anything you want basically with it. There's people making these guys dance, and that's fine. <laughs> that's that you can do it. There's, they dub them in different languages, and it it's sort of a new concept, especially back in the day. This is 2006, five when it started. Six was released, but it's a new concept. So the software is open. And the content is open. That's amazing. It's a, it's a very nice, refreshing thing. So it's kind of working. So let's keep doing it, right? Let, let's get more people in this same room, give them a food once a day, and then they, they might come up with something. That's when the Blender Institute was born. That was uh, after the first successful attempt to make a movie, which is the Blender, um, uh, sorry, the Elephant's Dream. Let's make it a thing. Let's get a place where we can get developers and artists working together in a, move, in, a, in, a, in a project. And let's see what happens. So that's when we got that, uh, not on the streets, actually. <laughs> it's inside, actually. That, that one window is one office and then the other one. So it actually is not too bad. It's, uh, it, we even have a nice little there, remember? <laughs> Just... Um, and a, a bunch of people, so it's not too bad. The, the room has windows. <laughs> we are actually uh, not not too bad there. Um, we are now. Well, this is a more recent picture. Now we have like the, our movies on the walls. So, um, and it's established place where developers from all over the world can come in and work. Um, artists can come and work. And now we're even making it a, a stable thing that people are just there constantly. Before. For the first few projects, it was just like a matter of uh, getting people for one project, five months, nine months, and then, see ya, <laughs> we don't have any money anymore. Um, so that's what happened with most of these projects. Uh, Elephant's Dream, do you recognize some of them? I hope you do, <laughs> especially these guys. I really like them, I don't know why. Um, this. Uh, I'm involved in that one, but so basically, uh, after Elephant's Dream, the Big Bug Bunny was uh, was was made. the The goal was, again, let's make a movie, let's improve Blender. What is Blender lacking, and what is in every movie you see on the cinema back in back back then? And you still see it. What do you see? Furry animals, <laughs> right? Like nice, cuddly, with hair. Sometimes not even nice, but they're just cuddly and <laughs> just hairy characters. So Blender really needed a, a particle system back then, and that was one of the, the reasons to, okay, let's, let's make it happen. Let's make a movie that it's all about grass and furry animals. So that's how Blender improved in that sense. Sintel, it has a dragon, it has um, nothing to do, but Blender needed to make dragons. You know, dragons are cool. And it needed also to, to improve the, the linking of the, like making it in a, into a bigger project. Sintel actually involved 14 people in that little room, 14 people. Um, imagine how, yeah, that was sort of more like they locked them in a room and yes. Um, but you have four, yeah, 14, 15 people at the peak working on the same project, interacting, and then messing with each other's files. So that was the goal of fixing it. Tears of Steel improved the, well, actually implemented the motion tracker uh, in Blender so you can track stuff. In between Bebug Bunny and Sintel, there was something there. There was the, the Blender game project, the only game engine project, which we still see the benefits nowadays. But it, so for some reason, people forget about it. I worked on it. Very sad. I should have put. Actually, I made this. This so I should have put the game project there. Is uh, called Yo Frankie. It's um, is the first uh, ever um, open game made of Blender Institute, and the only one that it was made back then. But it was it was exported with Blender Game Engine, which back in the day it was okay, but it needed a few things. And then um, this game brought them, like shadows, for example. You couldn't have shadows in the game. How basic. <laughs> It's not that shadows are an easy thing, easy thing but um, it implemented GLSL and, and a lot of things in Blender that we still have. Then, okay, coming in, that was just for fun. <laughs> Cosmos Laundromat, that was actually a bit more, more, more complex. I have a, a, a file there, a video I'm going to show. 
Glass half is uh, open, is fully OpenGL, and then this was also for fun. <laughs> They're shorter uh, projects. So here we see a little bit more of that beautiful llama penguins. This was the first, it was the Elephant's Dream. Blender Institute started, it, the, the name Institute is because of we, we also did training back in the day, but now we are more towards animation, so we are actually thinking of changing the name soon. <laughs> So as you can see, it's all the all these projects is uh, like you see in the bunny one is all fur and grass. This is all OpenGL. This you don't need to press F12 basically a render. You just see it in the viewport. So that was the goal to make a little short animation that it's only in the viewport. Intel, This is uh, Cosmos Laundromat. More recent with a lot of uh, like this mess of hair collisions and. It was a nightmare. Fun nightmare, though. The shaman, this is from Sintel. Coming on this. So, we uh, kept growing with the community. All of these projects were funded by the community. So that, that we go back to the community, we go back to Blender improvements or software improvement basically um, funded by the users, funded by the people. So you can ask an investor for a million or you can just ask uh, a million people for one buck each. And in this case, the, the, the DVD or whatever we had back then. And you can make things happen. So that's, that brings us to the present. So where is the Blender Institute at the moment? It lives on the Blender Cloud. So DVDs are not a thing anymore, it seems. <laughs> People don't like DVDs anymore. They don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so everything lives on the, on the cloud. So uh, we moved to a subscription system, but it came uh, on, on a website, but it actually came with a good result because it means that people can uh, subscribe and it means that we don't have to have like one project and it's over and then you have to go back home and find a new job. <laughs> Um, but you can actually make it uh, a thing, like every month you get people uh, getting tutorials or content and then we can actually stay at the Blender Institute and get developers to work in, in, in it. So now the Blender Institute, there, there are more developers than artists nowadays at the Blender Institute, which is great because that way we, we, yeah, we're improving. We're working in Blender 2.8 mainly, so it's not very visible at the moment, but, um, but it's happening. Uh, at the same time, we're also working, like trying to improve the asset manager, and uh, we're still making movies, actually. But the thing is that the community keeps pushing the Blender development along with other companies. So, what used to be uh, before used to be the investors, then it went to the to the people, to the, the power to the people. That's what it's all about. We're we're pushing Blender development. This is uh, sort of some of the improvements that happened. Uh, during Cosmos Laundromat. This is the improvements that were done on the um, smoke simulation, as you can see, well, sort of fluid. This is a quick, uh, um, like a breakdown reel of the VFX done. Um, we also use grass, again, not in the same way we did it in Big Bug Bunny, but now with cycles and very complicated things. Um, I have, I, I, I did the lighting for one of the shots with lots of grass and hair and everything. And I have the record for the longest render, which I'm not really proud of, but it was like 25 hours render. And in the latest project, the one, this was a few years ago, a couple years ago, 2014, three years ago. And now that same uh, shot renders way faster thanks to the improvements to like memory consumption and uh, um, uh, it handles better a lot of geometry basically. So that's really cool as well. So the, uh, we, we said that the development, the, the, the funding the development went from the investors to the people, the users, before used to be also just smaller individual uh, users, like at home and working on their own little projects. 
there was like, okay, maybe one company was using Blender for something a bit more advanced, like there was one, this famous article about Blender being used as a previous tool for Spider-Man 2 back in the days, um, but that, that was like the only one time that a guy maybe opened Blender just for fun a little bit and then it went crazy. Everybody was like, what, Blender in Spider-Man? Yeah, well, um, now it's actually happening. Now this is really happening, uh, the, as, as uh, Yuri was commenting and was showing actually, big companies are starting to use this tool. Maybe because they don't know that they're using Blender, that's why. <laughs> Maybe they just, they just see pretty pictures and then that, that's, that makes it, that's cool, we're blending in, huh? <laughs> we're blending in. Maybe you know this project, actually it was shown. Uh, this is one of the, 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 the examples of the high profile and users and studios, the customers that are using Blender nowadays. This is uh, Blend for Web, as you have seen it, but also in the VFX um, has, been, it has been used. All of this is available, by the way, on the blender.org website. There are articles about uh, user stories. Um, uh, you, can, you can Google it or just go to blender.org. And for example, this is a series that is yes, very high profile actually and is using Blender for building the sets and, and reconstructing Germany uh, from World War II. And this is also an article from already some years ago that a uh, TNT, the, the, the TV channel company, it used also Blender, it's a studio that used Blender for an advertisement of uh, this. But the guys from Game of Thrones too, you know, you know Sean Bean, so it just looks cool. <laughs> so the users are now higher profile. What happens with the development? So we went from the investors to the people. The people are, are, are funding, but yeah, but they can keep funding forever, right? They, they can, there is only so much that the, the community can do. Uh, right now there is a few uh, initiatives that the Blender Foundation runs, which is what the most important one is the Blender Development Fund which allows companies, studios, and individuals, anybody can chip in um, five bucks per month to, to get the development forward. So there is it's like a little pot uh, with, with, with money that every month is available to give to uh, independent or freelance developers to uh, work in specific tools and improve smaller areas within Blender. But still, is that one pot of money that is made by the people and by the, sm uh, the small studios. You need, you need something else, right? You, need, you, you want to, to not just hire a developer for three months and then see ya, <laughs> because then you lose that developer and that people is important. Developers, we need to keep them, we need to tie them, we need to lock them in a room, maybe that's, that's one, go one way of going. And that's what brings us to the present, which is Companies, big companies sponsoring Blender, finally, now they are, um, they're, they're appearing, they're, they, they see the potential. Um, for example, AMD, uh, we, we kept, well, we, I mean, the, the community itself, uh, but also the Blender Institute. Um, until recently, Blender wasn't, uh, Blender cycles, the render, weren't, wasn't really working with, uh, with, um, AMD cards, so that's a, that's a trick. Okay, we can make it work, but we need this amount of uh, of money. You need to hire a developer for two years, or two developers one year, or just just try to give that that bundle. And uh, yeah, no, maybe I don't know, I don't know. So now it works. Now uh, uh, Blender, the latest Blender development, not the one the stable one, but the one you can get is in development. It can run with AMD, and it runs sometimes even faster than NVIDIA cards, even. I don't know if faster, but cheaper though, because NVIDIA cards are expensive, so you can get a similar one, and it renders around the same time, around the same uh, render time. So that's trigger something, hey, actually these guys know what they're doing. And then uh, we, uh, has been announced recently that AMD is supporting two developers full time for Blender, like full time, so they just, just, just get their own job. Um, Tangent Animation is another studio which is making their second feature film in Blender and they're hiring another two developers, um, which is amazing. They already made a movie and they didn't complain during the whole production. Complain in the sense of they, were, they finished a movie in Canada 
40, two studios of 40 people, so 80 people, using Blender every day, making a movie, and they didn't complain, they didn't feel, file a bug, like a bug report, not even. Uh, they had their own developers, they changed a little bit of Blender just to make it render faster for like the style they were looking for. And uh, after that movie, they said, okay, well, let's, let's contribute back to Blender. So they are now hiring people to improve the pipeline and, and make it, making it work. Nimble Collective, another company that's also uh, hiring a Blender developer full-time for, uh, for over a year now. Um, Lulzbot, uh, Aleph, the 3D printing, also they're um, hiring Blender developers full-time. Uh, Valve, also uh, with, with VS Team, is contributing well, Google also contributed and Epic Games too. So companies are actually seeing the potential and they're contributing in the small parts. So we went from the investors to the people, to the people plus, the actual big people with the big, big bags of money that can say, okay, this is, this is uh, it's, it's worth investing in it. So it is happening. This transition is going. The future is bright. That's, that's what, I, what I like about it. And the users too, the users used to be smaller studios and now you can see it in high-end places. So is there a future? Yeah, I mean the future is there anyway. I mean it's not that it's just there is no future. Yes, there is future. I think there is future. I think this is the future. A big number. <laughs> so uh, up until now Blender well, if you, know, if you know Blender for a while, you know that the versioning number is not the best. It's kind of weird. It's, it, like, it has huge changes and it goes like from 274 to 275. So it looks like small, but it's actually way bigger. It is a bit conservative. It just tries to, to not show off, yeah, version 15, because maybe it's still not as good as version 15. So uh, we are now switching to Blender 2.8. We are in a process of change, and this allows us to break a few things to just, you know, uh, like take the time to delete the old crap, now that we can afford it, now we have people for it, and replace it with more modern content, with more modern um, technologies. Of course, some things might not work, like if, if you have a computer from 20 years ago, maybe it, it won't be as fast as the latest Blender, but you need to move forward, right? You can still download 279, which will come out in a few months, and it will have lots of things. You can make movies with it, but we need to move forward. So let's break everything. Not everything, but some things. Um, what is the future? We've been making, uh, at the Blender Institute, we've been making uh, short movies for a while. You've seen it. We've been uh, trying to, um, improve like little parts of Blender here and there. But every time we start a movie, <laughs> every time we, we start a short movie, you, you just get in it, you start making it, and then uh, maybe you're lacking a, um, I don't know, like a way to, to bring the new characters and then to switch objects. And since it's a team of maybe five, ten, ten people max, you can just and you've seen where we work. So you can just shout, it's like, hey, I'm using this file. And then uh, everybody knows. So there is this lack of, up, of scaling up, of, of maintaining uh, an organization in your files, in your projects, but when working on a large scale project. So that's why the feature movie uh, idea comes up. Let's get 100 people working in Blender every day. Let's see how it, how it goes. Um, that is for like making the, the movie part. So that actually is happening. We are, well, actually we are working on a short movie, short film, it's a pilot, it's a, like a, a pitch for a feature movie. This is actually happening, happening right now. There's people trying to get business done to, to, to find funding from usually from investors because this can't happen by the people can you can ask them hey let's make a movie um like a feature movie we actually tried that one <laughs> we tried in a few years ago uh with the cosmos laundromat project the one with the ship we that was supposed to be a short that will be part of many other shorts that make this big feature film movie but it didn't work 
uh, we couldn't get enough money and we couldn't get enough interest, at interest and it just didn't work. So now that we are making it on our own, which by the way, premieres next Monday. So if you happen to be on the internet <laughs> next Monday, which I guess you will, um, everybody does, it's, uh, yeah, it's gonna be out. So you can go to uh, this agent327.com or just go to blender.org or just anywhere near Blender because we've been working on it for a year. It's a short movie, it's gonna be only two, three minutes. Uh, three minutes. So, uh, but it's, it's pretty promising. The feature movie is tick off. Interaction. Yes, I think we are also going forward because we see it. What a better example of what you can do nowadays that everything is moving to, to, to real time, to, to just not wait anymore for renders. There are still people doing it, like we, like I said, 25 hours a frame. And right now we are rendering, we are rendering this guy, this, and it's taking some hours to, to render. So interaction is happening and we are moving forward to, towards that. And the same happens with, with real time. Um, this is a video, it's a really s uh, silly video that we, jeez, that's my voice. I don't wanna hear myself, there you go. But this is a, a very silly video that I recorded with my phone while one of the developers at the Blender Institute was, was working, the live Alinto. And this is showing cycles, which is the render engine that took 25 hours on top of the viewport, and on top of the, the regular viewport, the one where you select objects and move objects around. And this is Blender 2.8. This is working on Blender 2.8. If you're not familiar with this, it doesn't look as exciting. It looks noisy and horrible, but basically those arrows and, and the objects themselves working together, the render version and the edit version, um, it wasn't possible until a couple of days ago when this guy made it. <laughs> so uh, that is pretty cool. So that's what I mean with the interaction, the real timeness of things. It's, um, it's happening. So yes, real time is it's, it's coming to an end. We are in the future, I will say. We are close to, uh, we are in the future already. It's, it's happening. So everything is there. All the, all, all the, 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 the foundation for that is it's there. There's a challenge though. With Blender being getting this big and being used by so many different areas and, and, and people and backgrounds is the, how, how do you make one Blender for everybody? Well, there, we're, Addressing it with a few things um, from all these, like a little uh, words cloud thingy that shows a few things that we are working on right now. OpenGL uh, upgrades, uh, dependency graphs, so basically we can uh, we can have more complex um, sets and, and projects. Viewport, what we saw before, we're improving the viewport, so one day. We don't have to wait so long for the uh, for the renders, and we can have it in real time, and that will, everybody will benefit from that from the from the new viewport, and um, um, yeah, that's amazing. Collections, which is another way of organizing stuff. So the open the the challenge is getting there. The most important one is the workspaces, which will split Blender into its. Uh, right now, you have everything. You want to model, you have animation tools, you have motion tracking tools, you have everything. It's like Overwhelming, <laughs> you have everything there. So we plan on um, on splitting that task into uh, its own little workspace so you can actually um, have less, tool at a t less tools at a time, but we're in one workflow and then you can switch workflows very easily with, with tab, with the keys. It's not gonna be any harder, but we want to make room for more improvements. So it is happening. It is, it, is, it is possible because Blender is really your own 3D software. It's really what, what everybody can have their own 3D version, their own 3D software, which also is 2D now, <laughs> nowadays. So everybody can have their own version of Blender. There is no way we can have one software for everybody. So let's allow people to customize, improve, and over time, change their own software to their own needs. That's it. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Ilya. My nickname in web is Brother Mechanic. I want to ask you, tell you, thank you very much for you are here. I very like to, very interesting. You talking about uh, Blender. Thank you. And I want to, uh, to ask you, Cosmos Landromat, continue, when? Yeah, <laughs> when? Really waiting for it. And so all my friends waiting. Yeah, Cosmos Laundromat was, as I mentioned, was the first part in a series. It was like the first cycle, we call it, of a series. And we actually have the second part, like the storyboard and every the story is, is there. But yeah, just there wasn't enough time for it. And then, uh, but the story is there, the storyboards are there, and the content, as we said, is open content. So everybody can go to the website, to the Blender Cloud, get it, get inspired, and make it, uh, and, and make a second part. And uh, there are no plans right now for, for making it at the Blender Institute, but as we say, the story, everything is open content, so we might see it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Alexey Markin, uh, hey, and I want to ask when uh, version 2.8 will be released. First, we have 2.79 that will come out in a, in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's the idea, July maybe, for before Seagraph. And 2.8, We at that time we, we want to have like a, a working version of it, like a, a beta or alpha even, that it shows everything in a proof of concept. And a more usable version maybe towards the Blender conference October, but it won't be production ready by, by then, I, I think. Okay, thank you. Uh, hello again, Pablo. Hey. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to ask you about, uh, any, do you have any educational uh, programs to involve in uh, kids in CG, uh, to prepare uh, the young CG, CG specialist from the young nails? We, as, a, uh, as the Blender Institute, it, we're pushing one project that is called the Blender 101 which is very tightly connected to Blender 2.8. Uh, so as I mentioned in Blender 2.8, we want to give the users the ability to customize their own Blender, to make their own 3D software, right? To have all the tools there, but to have them presented in a way that is simpler to the user. So this Blender 101 project, it tries to simplify Blender as much as possible for, as, uh, for the task specific for that. Um, for that case, for example, if you have a kid, you want to teach him how to make a cube or how to make a cone and add color. Make a blender that is just one big button to add a, a cone and one big button to add a color. Just if it, the, the user is two, three years old, just teach him how to use that, that's it. And then you, have, uh, you, you can improve the, the UI to make it for five-year-olds where they can make their own little game maybe for older people, for uh, anything, for 3D printing. You just don't need all the animation parts, just do 3D printing. So it is, it is related to that. There is a project call, called Blender 101, and there is people working already uh, on that. But it really takes a lot of research to, first we are doing the technical part, which is allowing Blender to be customized um, for these specific tasks. And then there is also another group of people that are working on the what is it like? What exactly we want to, to, to give to the kids? But yeah, it's being worked on. It's very interesting. Thank you very much. No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, the VF Education mailing list if you want to get involved. Uh, we always need help from people with that uh, mindset of of teaching and and knowing exactly what what to show. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one last question. Yes. A question from the. I don't develop a point of view. So what will be the efforts to port um, relatively complex add-on for 2.8? I know it was a big problem for 2.5, to port from 2.4, 2.5, and what? Yeah, what, so well, well, in uh, the, the main reason for that problem in 2.4 to 2.5 is that in 2.4, the API was a mess. In 2.5, every tool became, it had its own little API where you can, uh, you can connect it to it. So everything had to be redone in 2.4 to 
Now from 2.7 to 2.8, it's not as big of a change. The main change is, main change is in the UI. So the, the add-ons developers will have to tell, OK, in which workspace is it available, in which um, it's UI mainly, but the API will stay fairly close. There might be some changes, but they will all be documented. So I don't think for developers will be a, a big or such a big issue to to to, to bring it to 2.8. Thank you very much, Pablo. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>